Previously, I showed you an Azure function with an embedded SQLite database. It all worked great on my machine, but it turns out that that's the only place it works. When I deployed into Azure, I get this error. What the hell is going on with this? And let's go and see if we can fix it. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever it is that I find you. So here we are trying to fix this databases locked issue with SQLite as an embedded database in Azure. And the underlying reason for this is because of the way that Azure runs as a complete sandbox environment. So it's a very locked down environment when compared to your local machine where you're running. Um, and basically the database file that gets deployed along with your Azure site um, has virtually no permissions on it at all. In fact, when I did a check and looked at the, the file attributes against it, it comes back with an absolute zero. So the file has absolutely no permissions at all. And so I tried trying to give it some extra attributes and permissions in code. So when the, when the site starts up, I tried some code to actually give this database some extra permissions to try and get around this issue. Uh, that didn't work because obviously the service as well itself, the process that's running has very limited permissions as well. So it is a very locked down sandbox environment. A bit of Googling and some people say that you could try to open it as read only mode considering we're only using this for queries. Um, I didn't get any joy from that opening it as read only because of the permissions issue. I still got the database locked. Some people have had some joy with using this write ahead logging approach. Uh, where you can open the journal mode and set that to write ahead logging. That didn't want to work for me. Uh, I had various issues around uh, because it was opened read only. Um, it didn't like that because this is all about writing to the database. So it said you can't use write ahead with a read only database. Disabling read only didn't make any difference either. I still got the database locked. So if we go and have a look at the actual information about the sandbox environment itself, we can see that this documentation does apply to Azure Functions, which for us people running on the Jamstack, our API runs as an Azure function. So this documentation does apply to us as well. Although we don't have the same access that you get with a fully fledged Azure function. So you can't get access through the Azure portal to go and look and dig around some of this stuff. It's very much restricted in the Jamstack side of things. So we kind of have to make our own assumptions and do a bit of digging and investigating. But the one interesting thing I did find on here, if I just scroll down here, so file system restrictions and considerations, which is definitely us because this is where we're having the problem is around the file system access to our database file. So there is two directories or there are two directories that we can get access to um, that are created by Azure in our environment. One is D slash home and one is D slash local. The D slash local is a temporary directory, as it says here, which is deleted every time the function terminates, it seems to me, is what I'm reading from this. Whereas the D slash home seems to be a per deployment directory that lives for as long as the deployment. So until we until we wipe our deployment out with another deployment, whatever we were to put into uh, d slash home, which as it says is read write accessible, um, then that will live for as long as, as that deployment. So that seems like the place where we really need to dump our database. So that's what we're going to do. So let's jump over to the code. And what we're going to do is in our main, at the point where we're starting up our function, we're basically going to copy our database from our app data folder that we had where we put our database just blow this up a bit so that you can see it so we've got our database in our app data folder inside our program cs when we start this up we are going to copy this across so let's go and put some bits and pieces in place to make this happen so first of all we need a few constants at the top so we've got a development constant that we can check that we're running in development or not because we only want to do this obviously if we're running inside of Azure not if we're running in our local development environment we've got our path to our database and we've got our path where we want to actually copy our database to inside of Azure so d home and then our database name so with those 
we can also create a new method in here to actually go and copy the file from that app data folder to the D home folder, set the attributes on that database file that we've just copied so that it's actually got some normal attributes so that we can open it for reading and writing if we wanted to. And I've just got a static variable in here as well, um, which I can get rid of for now. I don't need that anymore. So that's what our copy does. So now inside of our program itself down here, the first thing we're going to do is work out if we are running in our development environment. So this is the same thing that we've done elsewhere in our functions. But for those who are just joining on this one, uh, we check if it's equal to development. And if it is, we set that to true. So now we've got a nice variable that we can use to check if we're running in development or not. And then a quick call after that if we're not running in development and the file doesn't already exist in the d home directory then we go ahead and copy it from our app data folder to the d home directory so this is a one-time method that gets called here per deployment so every time we deploy the first time we run our function it will copy the database to the right place so that our api can find it in the right place so now that we've got our database in d home we're obviously not going to open it in our app data folder so let's go and change this line as well so that we open it from the right folder depending on if we're running locally in development or not so if we're running in development we open it from our app data folder and if we're not, then we look for it in the D home directory is what we're saying here. And that's it. So let's commit those changes, uh, stage that up, commit those in, push that up and wait for that to rebuild over in Azure. And then I'll come back and I'll show you that it's working on Azure. OK, so that's built. So let's come over to our website and I've got the URL there that was showing us that the database was locked. So let's just hit that and we can see that we now get our data back as we would expect. So likewise, if I now come over to my site and bring up the employee search page and try a quick search, we can see that we get our data coming back. So there's all our response data and the site is working as we would expect. So we can do our usual test just to bring back the Stevens. And there's our Stevens, as we would expect. So lesson learned. Don't assume that something that works locally is going to work inside your deployment environment, especially when it comes to cloud environments, because they're especially locked down. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.